Hey everybody. Hey, quick update. Um, you know, we had the crack manifold, so I went ahead and ordered this uh, the box R intake, which I want to use for the 347. But a quick shout out to um, Tony at uh, Big Dog Sporting, who did these Trick Flow heads also, which was my best ET was with those heads over there, the Trick Flow heads right there. But uh, Tony, uh, he reached out to me, and it is really good service. Uh, when he saw the video I posted about the cracked intake, he said, hey man, I want to make sure you get some good uh, clean passes with the, um, with the stage, this is his stage two ported um, intake. So he sent me a replacement lower. Of course, I'm going to mail this one back because he actually wants to test it and make sure it was flat. Um, I didn't over torque it, but the gaskets I had reused quite a few times, the Felpro. So they might have been too hard or something. I'm not sure. Um, but the only thing I can think of is they were old gaskets. But anyway, um, I had already had got this installed when he reached out to me and mailed me a replacement. So I think that's pretty good service, man, to, to replace a uh, a broken uh, intake. And I bought that. I've had this for a couple years. So, I mean, he didn't have to do that. But, you know, I think, uh, you know, we want to provide some good information and do, you know, we want to compare the, the Stage 2 to the uh, System Max. You know, this has been my best ET so far was this and the Trick Flow heads. So we want to do, um, see if we can match with the Stage 2. GT40 and that thing pulls good. I mean, I have no doubt it it will uh, run just as hard as that System Max. But uh, the one thing I wanted to go over was the installation of this um, box R. They give you these 12 point bolts. It's real tight to get a, a wrench in there. I actually had to grind it, grind one of my extra wrenches, the heads off to make it fit. So. You're gonna be, you're gonna have a hard time getting wrenches on here, but anyway, I made it work. You know, just gotta ground it, and make kind of a make a thin ratchet. Um, you can make the stock fuel rail work. You know, they don't tell you, but in the in the instructions they say uh, you know other parts you need to buy is is a set of their fuel rails, and obviously the reasoning for that is um, the fuel pressure regulator is real tight right here. So I went back. Um, I got rid of my I didn't get rid of it, but I had to take off, you know, my adjustable regulator was way up here. So I still kept my stock one. And then um, what I had to do was actually, once I got it on, was um, I did have to bend the rail down a little bit to get it to just barely clear. Of course, they make spacers for this too, but, um, I, and also were able to get the stock hood to clear. Now I had to do two things to do that. One was, um, you know, we had cut out the bracing from the hood, so... This is where the intake was hitting. So obviously if you got your bracing in there, you know, that's gonna be another inch. But if you notice, look down here, I did get a one inch, uh, one inch spacers for the, <clears throat> for the uh, K member. So with the, with the one inch spacers and the bracing cut out, the hood closes, stock hood closes. They don't have to cut it. So the stock hood does close. Uh, so that's my update. And of course we will be, uh, we'll give this uh, stage two another run. But also yesterday we got, uh, we got the cage in. So I hired a guy off of a uh, mobile welder off Facebook. Uh, young man came over um, and got this, you know, he'd obviously never done it before, but, you know, we worked together and went with the instructions. This is the, uh, Wild Rides, Wild Rides, uh, Wild Rides. So, um, I get, did all the prep, tore the interior out, you know, got all the sound deadening off of the, the floor pans, and then back in the back by the uh, spare tires. Now, just, uh, just removing those little spots of the, uh, just removing that little bit, that was almost five and a half pounds of sound deadener. And then uh, the hardest, actually the hardest part was getting these back in with the cage installed. Um, but I did paint everything while it was out. 
So we had to grind up here, and then of course I just went back and touched it all up. But um, yeah, we it took us about four hours total, and like th honestly, three of it was mocking everything up and making sure it was right, putting the angle finder on the on the main hoop to make sure the setback was good. All these knots, we only had to adjust one end of this driver's side uh, door bar, and it's because uh, this car was has been in an accident, so that. That floor might have been slightly uh, bowed or buckled a little bit. So we just uh, had to grind the front of that bar down a little bit. But, yeah, real happy with it. Um, I did take it out for a quick just drive around the block this morning after I got it all put back together. And, man, the car feels a lot stiffer, a lot less rattles. Um, you know, no creaking or rattling. Just felt a lot more solid on the road and, and actually quieter. So, you know, this, if you think putting the... The amount of rattles that was reduced when you put your subframe connectors on, and then you you put a cage in here, man, it's it's twice as much, you know. I mean, it really stiffens up this chassis quite a bit. So, real happy with the outcome. I paid the guy uh, 200 bucks, and uh, you know, he's a young guy, 24. Does uh, he's got a structural welding uh, certificate, went to a trade school, you know, and shoot, he's doing pretty well for himself, and does. Uh, you know, mobile welding on the on the weekends. But anyway, that's the update. I just got my harness in today too, so I'm gonna get that hooked up, and then of course I gotta order the uh, the brace for the back of the Kirky seat. They have one at Summit that looks pretty nice. But anyway, and then we're still continuing. Uh, we're gonna be doing the nitrous testing. But one thing I would mention, guys, uh, if you're if you're fairly tall or you know if you're like six foot or taller like I am. It is not easy to get past the steering wheel. I might have to get a quick disconnect on the steering wheel because <coughs> it's hard to get my legs around there. But it is a tiltable. It, it does tilt up, so that helps. But I might you might need to have a, that quick disconnect steering wheel put in. That's one thing I would highly recommend uh, if you don't want to do that to get the swing out door bars. Um, I didn't know it was going to be that difficult getting in and out. But you know, if you're shorter, I don't think it'd be an issue. But if you're six foot or taller, um, definitely get the swing out door bars or, again, I'm going to have to do a steering wheel uh, disconnect. All right, that's the update for this week. Um, we'll be back out at the next test in tune is June 12th. I might go to one of the streetcar nights, but I'm not sure on that. Anyway, uh, still waiting for the pistons for the 347 to come in. So when that does, you know, this engine will be out. This guy will go in with the, uh, with the Stage 2 big dog on there for more testing and we'll go from there all right everybody have a great memorial day weekend take care